Hi, I'm Debbie and this is Book and Bujo. And today we are setting up my 2024 reading journal. Today I am using one of my Archer and Olive notebooks that I got from a subscription box. And this is pretty much a letter size notebook, but it is the dot grid. And it does have the, the pocket, the pin loop, the strap. We got the two bookmarks. Got the nice five centimeter dot grid and it's 160 GSM paper. So that's my notebook. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to use for my reading journal and I figured out that I needed to use this notebook because I don't really like the color. <laughs> but with it being a dot grid, no one in my family that does like this color would actually use it because they don't use the dot grid. They only use lined paper. So I was like, okay, I got to use this. So let's go ahead and see what I have that matches and goes with this cover to use for my 2024 setup. So I've got my Pentel sign brush pens here. And I've decided to go with kind of that teal and that peachy color. So I have a couple of dual tip Stadler markers. So it has the fine line on one side and the marker tip on the other. And then I have my teal mild liner brush pen, which has the brush on one side and the fine tip on the other. I have an Inkjoy, Paper Mate Inkjoy in this tealish blue color and it's the 0.5 tip. And lastly, I have one of my Ohuhu color markers in coral pink, which has the brush pen on one side and the fine liner on the other. Now I'm not sure all of what I'm going to need for this setup. So I also have my glue stick here and an assortment of washi tapes. We'll see what I end up using. So when I was trying to figure out how I wanted to set up my journal, I was looking back at some of my past journals and I was kind of feeling in a creative rut and not sure. I knew what I was using wasn't really working for me anymore and I wanted to change it up, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to change it up. And so I was watching a Jashi Curran videos and I saw her do a flip through of a 2023 reading journal that was done by Monica Bibliophile by Night, and I will leave her Instagram linked below as well as that flip through video so you can uh, see the setup there. Some of the spreads that she did, I pretty much just kind of copied in here because I, I need something different, and going with what she had was helping me to kind of tweak some other things and get out of that creative rut. So some of the things will be almost identical to the way she had things set up, and other pages I will tweak to make my own. And I think this will help me a lot in what I want out of my reading journal. So let's just jump in and get started. So to start with, on this side, Jashi Curran did create a fun little map, little bookish map. So we've got Book Talk Vortex, the Forbidden Library, come over here to Hardcover Bluff, the Awkward Love Triangle, we have the Spine Kraken and Unrequited Love. Just kind of fun age gap over here, Indie Isle. So it's just kind of fun. So she does have this for purchase in her shop and I will leave that linked down below as well. And then I have some other paraphernalia in here that I might want to use. So I have some bookish stickers and some other stats and ideas that I want to put in my journal somewhere, but not sure where I want to put them yet. So I'll set those aside, but I am going to use this Archer and Olive pocket that I also got in one of the subscription boxes. So I can put prompts and other maybe some stickers and other just fun things in there uh, maybe use this as like a little tbr mini tbr jar i just thought it'd be fun to have a pocket here maybe some bookmarks i could leave it open and i could put like a grid spacing guide something like that in here as well i think that's probably the most efficient use of that one and then it also has this nice little spot here where you you can just push this in here and keep it closed and then i found this really cool circular moon image and I cut out the center of it and thought it would be kind of fun to place it right in the middle here. So let's go ahead and get started on my name page.
So down at the bottom here, I also always put how many dots or spaces there are vertically and horizontally just for a really quick reference. All right, name page done. Later on, I may color in a little bit on here, but I think for now I wanna leave it as it is. Same with over here, I may do like a little, some of the lighter colors maybe in some of the shading around here, but for now I'm just gonna leave it as is and live with it for a little bit and see what I think. So now on to my reading tracker and my battle of the books and I will be using my Archer and Olive stencil on this side using this one for each of the months so instead of doing January, February, March, April because sometimes I have a month that there are mainly like three some four stars and other months where I may have two or three five stars so instead of limiting to January well this was the best of the eh books I can do the books that I actually really liked. So get all of my five stars kind of on here and some four stars that maybe I loved, but they weren't necessarily five star books, but I still just really loved them because they were fun. So that's how I'm going to set this one up. So then between like one, two, and three, I'll pick one book between four, five, and six, we'll narrow it down, that kind of thing. Or maybe even between one and two, I'll narrow that down. And between three and four, I'll narrow it down to, until I get to the center where that will be the winner. So one warning I would give with the metal stencils. So if you have like a Muji gel pen or something with that type of tip on it, uh, be very careful using these metal ones because I have um, had to throw away one of my refills that went in one because the tip of it uh, got cut through from the metal and it no longer worked. So just keep that in mind when choosing what pins to use these stencils with. Didn't measure quite well enough, got a little tight down here, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to find some bookish quote at some point during the year and add it in here. So it may be from a book I read or something I find later on the internet. And then here I'm going to have some kind of some of the anticipated books that I am interested in for 2024. There aren't too many of them that I know of right now, but I will put those in here and I have quite a bit of space to add more. This is my reading tracker. So for each day of each month, I can put how many pages I read, and that would be uh, a clear or a solid color, and then more of a circle dot that I will use my Ohuhu dot tip markers for. 
and that would be how many hours of audiobooks I listened to. Now, if I did multiple in the same day, then I would do like half the space fully colored in and the other half of the square as a circle. And I have my ratings, what the cop pile means, and I also have, I think later in here, I want to actually put out what each of these mean. So characters, but what about the characters? Like, and what does atmosphere mean and things like that. So I will have that listed later. So that way I don't always have to go back to my spreadsheet for that. All right, next up we have series to finish. So I do have some other tippins that I'm gonna leave in my notebook as well. So I have my 24 and 24. So this will be the list of 24 books that I definitely wanna try and get to in 2024. And on the other side is uh, the top 12 classics and nonfictions that I want to get to in 2024. And then I have my top 10 series to finish. So these are series that I want to finish or that I've started and I know I want to complete. But this will be the priority series. So those top 10 that I definitely want to complete. And then on this side is more priority reads. So out of all of these lists, what are the top ones that I want to get to, and then also if I need more space than what's here, I can add that to this one. And then this will be my prime reading books, or what I call my Amazon borrows, so you get 10, and once you return one, you can then check out another one, so I will keep, list, uh, tra li I will keep track of those here. And then on this side is going to be my D20. So I'll have 20 books on here. And if I land on that space in my TBRopoly game, then I will pull this up. I will roll the D20 die and figure out what book I will be reading. So that's what these ones are. But this page itself will be my series to finish. Since I was able to get some of my priority reads over here on this section, I may change this to continue with series because in my last reading journal I actually had two full spreads so like these two and these two full of my series that I'm in the middle of and wanting to finish so I think I'm going to change this one to more series to finish. So let's do that now before I forget. All right, let's get started on my series to finish. I also have the A to Z challenge here as well as Buzzwordathon. Got this for my birthday from my sister, but I think this one will work really well on here.
it's time for our final flip through. My battle of the books reading tracker for how many pages and hours I read each day, all color coded, what copile means for each of the different scores for my ratings, and some of my plans as well as books that I really want to get to I will put in here. So some of my hopes for the year are to read less books this year than I did in previous years, get back into reading a classic every month as well as a nonfiction every month, read more of my Kindle books, uh, read six indie books, uh, do a buddy read, read through some of my Kickstarter books that I've been getting, and finish at least six series. And over here I started putting in my series to finish already, and the ones with that are colored in already are ones I have read before 2024, so I read them either last year or the previous year. I will use the kind of tealish color for books that I read this year. Uh, I will have an open circle for ones that are not read yet and crossed out if it is not released yet by the end of the year. So I know I'm caught up. And then I also have my 24 books in 2024 that I want to read. I need to finish filling in a couple of the authors. I didn't have them when I was originally doing this one. <laughs> And then I have the top 12 classics I want to try and get to and the top 12 nonfiction books I would like to read as well. And then I have my top 10 series that I want to complete in 2024. I haven't quite filled this one out yet. I'm still deciding on a couple of series. I know number one is Kingfall by David Estes as well as his Slip series. I would like to finish that one as well. I only have one book left in that series. So. And then if I need more space on my series to finish, I have that one. <laughs> but I am able to get kind of two rows on each page. So that's good. And then I have my readathons, book clubs, and read-alongs. I've already started my January one and these are all color coded and I have my key here. So each of the colors mean a different thing, so I don't have to write out each of them. I could just do the dot from the color. So Bujo Buddies with Jashi Curran, that's that top one there. And then I will write the book in that we are reading for January here. And then I can also put a little check mark in the circle if I finished it. And then I will continue as I go. I'm also going to include the readathon that I am participating in for that month. So in January, I'll be doing New Beginnings Readathon with Rye Reads which was formerly known as Books and Bops. And then I will just keep going. So some of these uh, read-alongs and book clubs don't always have a book every single month, so that's why I don't want to pre-do all of them. Then here I have my prime reading, which I typically call my Amazon borrows. So I will fill that one out with the ones that I have on my list currently by the end of December, so I'll fill that out next week. And then I have my D20 books, which I also will fill out from the books I have not completed from this year's D20, as well as maybe my 23 and 23 books that I haven't finished. I will add those here. Then I have my Buzzwordathon, so I will add the prompt here and then the book and author that I read on this side. And then the A to Z challenge, so I'll have my A, B, C, D continuing down the line, and then of course the book and the author. Here I have my books read, so I'm planning on hopefully doing one shelf per month and I can add stickers and other little paraphernalia throughout if I don't read that many books or I can go into the next line if for some reason I go crazy and read a ton of books. And then I will color them in by the star rating that I give them. So that'll be a little different. I typically color them in by month, but since I have one shelf for each month, I can do a little different this year. So my quote that I have here is, this year's book at midnight turns to a footnote in the next. And that's by Terry Gielmitz. Then I have my books read list. So every time I read a book, I will put the actual information here. So the name of the book, if, the, if it was a series, what number in the series it was, the author, and what rating I gave it. 
and that's just kind of more of like an index for me for all of the books because I will have them here but you can't get everything on one of those tiny little pieces <laughs> and then the second page it does go up to about 180 books I'm hoping not to read that many this year because if I read more physical books and Kindle books, that takes me longer than audiobooks. And I would like to read more physical and Kindle books this year. And then I have my Bible reading tracker. And you saw earlier when I was putting this page together that my finished one from 2023. So you kind of see what it'll look like at the end. And I did add some coloring in here. It took me a little while. Most of my gray Tombos are running out of ink <laughs> and I'm going to have to restock on those, but I did finally find one that worked. I think it's the N89. And then I added a couple pieces of washi tape in here as well. And this is basically by chapter. Sometimes some Bible reading plans have you end in the middle of a chapter. So I tend to just color a half of the box and then the other half when I get to that one. And then by the end, all of these should be colored in. And then something else I'm working on, but I'm hoping that she does a new one. I'm not sure if she will. If not, I'm still going to continue and use the prompts from last year and maybe play around the map a little bit more. And that is The Adventures in Aldia with G at Book Roast. And so this is the map from 2023. And if she comes out with a new one, I'll just tape or glue that over the top of this one. If not, then I will continue to use this one. And then I have my two characters over here and uh, the prompt and what books they will read on this side. And that is it. Then we'll get into January, a little sneaky peek there. I will have that video up for you, hopefully by the beginning of the year. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other videos from me. And if you made it this far, leave a sailboat emoji in the comments in honor of the bullet journal I'll be using for 2024. And until next time, keep reading. Bye!